What's going on everybody? My name is Aiden and welcome back to another video. Ladies and gentlemen, just in my last video, I named the five candidates I would like to see as a Chicago Bulls player from this upcoming NBA draft. And in one of those players, I said there is a chance I may never have to learn his name because he might not be selected for the Chicago Bulls. Well, it turns out that is the player that we actually drafted. And I'm going to try and say his name now, ladies and gentlemen, and hopefully I can say it correctly. His name name is Mateus or Mattis Bezelis. Hopefully I said it correctly. That's who we selected with the 11th overall pick. But before we get any further, if you like the video and you want to see more from me, drop a like, drop a follow, and or subscribe if you are new. And let me know in the comments below your thoughts about Mateus Bezelis and would you like to see him potentially come into that starting lineup for the Bulls or does he have to earn his way in there off the bench? But that is who we've selected with the 11th overall pick. Now I am happy happy with this pick. I know, put my hands up. It seems like Bulls fans are never happy with the NBA draft. We never seem to be satisfied with the NBA draft. No one was happy when we selected Dale and Terry. No one was happy when we selected Patrick Williams. I think most people will come out of this draft class feeling happy with what we selected for a couple of reasons. Number one, he fits a need, ladies and gentlemen. He does fit needs. He's six foot eight, I believe. He is a person that can play in multiple positions. He's a very, very, very versatile player. He can knock down the three. He's a good defender. There's a lot to like about him. He has tremendous upside, and that is always what you want to see from a draft pick, especially with a draft pick like the 11th overall pick. Number two, I don't necessarily think he's a hometown kid. I don't, I don't know where he was born, but you know, they, the, the Chicago Bulls themselves posted "Welcome Home" essentially, and there were people in the comment section saying, "Oh, he was born on, he was born here. I was not born in Chicago." Stuff like that. Again, for most people who you know, won't care about the state that he was born in. He was born close to Chicago. He's considered a hometown kid. So that's going to be another reason why people will like him. Number three is because he was projected to go higher in the NBA draft. We didn't have to do anything to get him. We didn't have to sacrifice anything to get him. We didn't have to, you know, trade downwards to get him either. That could have been a positive if that happened for us. We got him at 11. We didn't have to do anything. All this talk, we're going to have to trade Zach Levine and a couple of other pieces just to get this player or to go and get Donovan Klinger. Donovan Klinger did go high up in the draft, by the way, if you were interested. He he was not going to get selected at 11, and I think most people knew that. But Mateus Bezelis, he fell right to us. He fell into the palm of our hands. And I think the fourth thing why, or the fourth reason why people are very happy with this is obviously the interview he gave afterwards. He was very emotional. He said that this is what he was born. You know, he he was he was he was born for this. He was made for this. And obviously, he wanted to play in Chicago as well. So instantly, you're going to get a lot of the Bulls fans on board when you speak nicely about Chicago and the Chicago Bulls, and you basically say this is the place that I want to be. You're going to get a lot of Bulls fans on your side right before you even bounce a basketball for the Chicago Bulls. And that's the same reason why a lot of people like Dale and Terry. Dale and Terry came right in there in the 18th overall pick a couple of years ago and said, I wanted to play in Chicago. This was the place I wanted to be. And people love Dale and Terry and still love Dale and Terry because of that message. And I think Mateus Bezelis will, you know, fall in that same category, I would assume as well. Now, with that being said, did we make the right choice? That's a big question. Well, the thing I like about Mateus Bezelis, again, I've talked about him in a very weird way. Uh, I feel like if you go to some scouting reports, a lot of his strengths are also considered some of his weaknesses, like shooting the ball, like defending and guarding the perimeter or guarding the, guarding the rim, or he, he, he has a very unique situation where he needs to improve on his body and stuff of that nature, which will always happen in the NBA. You'll always get improvements, uh, you know, in the physical stature. So that's not even a concern for me. But the best thing you can take away from this situation is the way that he got to the NBA draft. He played in the G League Ignite team and he played against grown men. And I always have a little bit more respect, just a little bit, a little bit more respect for players to take that avenue compared to the college game. Like I've said many, many times, when you play the college game, you're playing against the exact same situation of guys. Guys that are younger, still not fully developed, still not fully grown, still not fully in their right frame. 
And they're all gunning for the same thing, to try and stand out in college to get a high selection in the NBA draft. And look, that is the ultimate way to get into the NBA. It's college. It always has been. It probably always will be. But when you see people take different aspects and different avenues, like the G League, do you know how hard it is to play in the G League when you're 19 years old and you've barely really touched the grass of professional basketball? Do you know what I mean? Like, it's insane. And he took that avenue. In my opinion, that is the hardest avenue to take when you're facing grown men whose ambitions and goals are to get to the NBA. Some of them probably have played in the NBA before and are coming back. Maybe it's a 10-day contract situation or a two-day co contract situation. Regardless, you're playing against grown athletes. 25, 26, 27 year olds built already into their body, into their prime years. You're facing those guys in the hopes to try and make it to the NBA. At 19 years of age, I will always respect a player that takes the harder route to get there. And again, it kind of will show in his character, I believe, as well. I think he'll come into the NBA and he'll prove already how hard working he will be for the Bulls. And he's already kind of mentioned it as well, how he's going to give everything to this Bulls team. These are the things I'm excited to see. But ultimately, I do believe we made the right pick. Again, he was projected at some moments to go into the top five. He was projected in other moments to fall all the way down. At the end of the day, I think he was considered very high for a lot of people. And we selected him in a place where we probably didn't think he'd be available. So, of course, I'm happy. I do think he was one of the best available in that selection as well. And look, we're not going to sit here and talk about, oh my goodness, Daylon Terry, who was projected to go late first round or even in the second round. Oh my goodness, Patrick Williams, who was expected to go late lottery. Why are we taking a chance on him now? Why are we taking a chance on Daylon Terry now? There's, I don't think there's going to be many people talking about that heading into this draft and selecting this player because I think the vast majority of people would have liked Mateus Bezelis as a Chicago Bull. Now, granted, there will be some minority, of course, that will say this is an absolutely garbage pick. I'm not going to sit here and change your mind. If you think it's a garbage pick, the only thing that we can do is wait and see if Mateus Bezelis can prove you wrong. But I think a lot of people are going to be on board from the very beginning, and I'm very happy to say that. So with that being said, I did not even know the draft had two nights. That's crazy. Um, I think that happened last year. And it's happening this year as well. So look, if the Bulls make any more business, by the time, I guess, the next draft night happens, if the Bulls trade into it and get the player that they're looking for and stuff of that nature, of course, I will make another video down the line talking about it. I will probably miss that draft class as well, that draft night as well. Um, it's, it's just is what it is. I can't really change that. And we'll just see how it goes. Thank you for watching. Drop a like and a follow and or subscribe if you are new. And I will see you in the next one. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay tuned for more. Take care. And peace.